Lewis? Clark? Lewis, where are you? Clark, where are you? Clark? Lewis? Where are you? Lewis? Clark? Oh, I remember Lewis in our expedition. Dear Clark, Herewith enclosed you will receive the papers belonging to your brother, General Clark, which sometime since you requested me to procure and forward to you. Pray excuse the delay which has taken place. It has really proceeded from causes which I could not control. Isn't the Upper Mundane Village a great place to stay for the winter? Yeah. What? I just wish we got further. We're still in Missouri. And we started walking three months ago. How big is this state? No bigger than Pennsylvania, my friend. From the long and uninterrupted friendship and confidence which has subsisted between us, I feel no hesitation in making to you the following communication under the fullest impression that it will be held by you inviolably secret until I see you, or you shall hear again from me. During the last session of Congress, a law was passed in conformity to a private message of the President of the United States, entitled, An Act Making an Appropriation for Extending the External Commerce of the United States. The object of this act, as understood by its framers, was to give the sanction of the government to exploring the interior of the continent of North America, or that part of it bordering on the Missouri and Columbia rivers. So what's the plan? Well, we have to get over the Rocky Mountains that are here and then find a port at the Pacific that we can send some of the men home to Washington to show Jefferson that we found a port that the U.S. can use. After that, if it's winter, we wait it out there with the Indians. If not, we start back over the Rocky Mountains and head back the way we come, by the Mur Missouri River, all the way back to St. Louis. It is the Rocky Mountains where I see us having a problem, because we do not have Sacagawea to guide us back. So we either have to find another Indian scout to take us back, or we have to find a way back ourselves. But that is a problem that we have to worry about in the future. Right now, we have to set up camp and get everything ready before nightfall. I don't want to have to start a fire in the dead of night again like we had to do last week. Oh. This enterprise has been confided to me by the President, and in consequence, since the beginning of March, I have been engaged in making the necessary preparations for the tour. These arrangements being now nearly completed, I shall set out for Pittsburgh, the intended point of embarkation, about the last of this month, and as soon as, at front, as from the state of the water you can reasonably expect me, I shall be with you, say about the 10th of August. Are you eating snow? North is this way, Meriwether. To aid me in this enterprise, I have the most ample and hearty support that the government can give in every possible shape. I am armed with the authority of the government of the United States for my protection, so far as its authority or influence extends, in addition to which, the further aid has been given me of liberal passports from the ministers both of France and England. I am instructed to select from any corps in the army a number of non-commissioned officers and privates not exceeding twelve who may be disposed voluntarily to enter into this service. Are you sure John Carter isn't confounding the expedition? The interpreter? Yeah. Why do you say that? He seems to be having longer sentences than what you're saying for to translate to the Indian people. Are you sure you are not being paranoid? Yes, I'm sure. Their language is longer syllables than English, so it takes him longer to speak the same sentence to me because it takes longer to get out. All I'm saying is just keep an eye on it. This is a short view of means with which I am entrusted to carry this plan of government into effect. I will now give you a short sketch of my plan of operation. I shall embark at Pittsburgh with a party of recruits eight or nine in number, intended only to manage the boat, and are not calculated as a permanent part of my detachment. When descending the Ohio, it shall be my duty to inquiry to find out and engage some good hunters, stout, healthy, unmarried men, accustomed to the wounds and capable of bearing bodily fatigue in a pretty considerable degree. 
Should any young men answering this description be found in your neighborhood, I would thank you to give information of them on my arrival at the Falls of the Ohio, and if possible, learn the probability of their engaging in this service. This may be done perhaps by holding out the idea that the, the direction of this expedition is up the Mississippi to its source, and thence to the Lake of the Woods, stating the probable period of absence at about 18 months. What are we doing here? Right now we see what animals are here, what plants grow, all that stuff. Do we really have to? Yes. Our job is to further the external commerce of the U.S. to communicate with the ministers of France, Spain, and England. We are also supposed to find the most convenient water communication from Washington through the Pacific Ocean. Fine, get all logical on me. The present season already being so far advanced, I do not calculate on getting further than two or three hundred miles up the Missouri before the commencement of the ensuing winter. At this point, wherever it may be, I shall make myself as comfortable as possible during the winter and resume my journey as early in the spring as the ice will permit. Hey, brother, I'm tired. My feet hurt. And I'm cold. And I'm hungry. And this is taking too long. I'm not having fun. Should nothing take place to defeat my progress altogether, I feel confident that my passage to the Western Ocean can be effected by the end of the summer or the beginning of autumn. In order to subsist my party with some degree of comfort during the ensuing winter, I shall engage some French traders at Illinois to attend me to my wintering ground with a sufficient quantity of flour, pork, etc., to serve them plentifully during the winter, and thus be enabled to set out in the spring with a healthy and vigorous party. What's that? It's a duck, Captain. Quick! Take a picture before it runs away because it saw your ugly face. So much for the great outlines of this scheme. Permit me now to mention partially the objects which it has in view or those which it is desirable to effect through its means, and then conclude this lengthy communication. You must know in the first place that my sanguine expectations are at this time formed by our government that the whole of that immense country watered by the Mississippi and its tributary streams, Missouri inclusive, will be the property of the United States in less than 12 months from this date. But here let me again express to you with the necessity of keeping this matter a perfect secret. In such a state of things, therefore, as we have every reason to hope, you will readily conceive the importance to the United States of an early, friendly, and intimate acquaintance with the tribes that inhabit that country. Um, um, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 um, uh, 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 so, um, uh, um, um, I'm going to bed. that should they be early impressed with the just idea of the rising importance of the United States and of her friendly dispositions toward them, as also her desire to become useful to them by furnishing them through her citizens with such articles by way of barter as may be desired by them or useful to them. What in God's name are you doing? Playing with my necklaces. Why? You would if you had necklaces. No, I wouldn't. Just because Sacagawea made you those necklaces doesn't mean you have to play with them all the time. The other objects of this mission are scientific, and of course not less interesting to the United States than to the world generally, such as the ascertaining by celestial observation the geography of the country through which I shall pass. The names of the nations who inhabit it, the extent and limits of their several possessions, their relation with other tribes and nations, their languages, traditions, and monuments, their ordinary occupations in fishing, hunting, war, arts, and the implements for their food, clothing, and domestic accommodation, the diseases prevalent amongst them, and their, the remedies they use, the articles of commerce they may need or furnish, and to what extent, the soil and face of the country, its growth and vegetable productions, its animals, 
the manierial productions of every description, and in short to collect the best possible information relative to whatever the country may afford as a tribute to general science. To the Petit Voleur, or Wer Rougenor, the great chief of the Autos, to the chiefs and warriors of the Autos, and the chiefs and warriors of the Missouri nation residing with the Autos. What are you doing? I'm practicing for when we give the speech tomorrow at the Autos, that we come in peace and all that jazz. Well, stop. You look like an idiot. My instruments for celestial observation are an excellent set, and my supply of Indian presence is sufficiently ample. Thus, my friend, you have so far as leisure will at this time permit me to give it to you, a summary view of the plan. That means, and the objects of this expedition. If therefore there is anything under those circumstances, in this enterprise, which would induce you to participate with me in its fatigues, its dangers, and its honors, believe me, there is no man on earth with whom I should feel equal pleasure in sharing them as with yourself. I make this communication to you with the privacy of the President, who expresses an anxious wish that you would consent to join me in this enterprise. He has authorized me to say that in the event of your accepting this proposition, he will grant you a captain commission, which of course will entitle you to the pay and emoluments attached to that office, and will, equal, and will equally with your, myself entitle you to such portion of land I was granted to officers of similar rank for their revolutionary services. The commission, commission with which he proposes to furnish you is not to be considered temporary, but permanent if you wish it. Your situation, if joined with me in this mission, will in all respects be precisely such as my own. Pray write to me on this subject as early as possible and direct me at Pittsburgh. Should you feel disposed not to attach yourself to this party in an official character, and at the same time feel disposition to accompany me as a friend any part of the way up the Missouri, I should be extremely happy in your company, and will furnish you with every aid for your return from any point you may wish it. With sincere and affectionate regard, your friend and humble servant, Meriwether Lewis. So, uh... Ready? No. Go. Now, now, uh, 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 do you say action or something like that? Or Go. Do I just... No, I, no, we're doing action. We're gonna say action. Because it's more official. Action. Cool though? Yes. I need to be like, cool. I need, I need a cup. I, I need like a mug. He doesn't have a mug. No. Oh, uh, wait. Commencing spin. Make sure that's on there. Why? Oh, yeah. He will grant you a captain commission, which of course will entitle you to the pay and oh god, M M O L what? <laughs> I missed that one. M O L M M O L U M E N T S. Start again. Start again. Thus, my friend, you have so far as leisure. Will at this time permit me, permit fuck permit me permit me permit me.